so this is Griffith's quantum mechanics, problem 2.39. Part A says, show that the wave function of a particle in the infinite square will returns to its original form after a quantum revival time of big T equals 4 ma squared over pi h bar. All right, and um, so what this boils down to is that when we look at the, um, the Schrodinger equation, for any of our stationary states, um, if we want to know how that state evolves in time, so with dependence on, on t as well, some people use a capital psi for this, then you have uh, your stationary state, or well, your, I mean, any state that evolves according to the Schrodinger equation, you have the initial condition, right, the initial wave function. And the way that it evolves in time is this exponential sort of a phase factor e to the minus i e t over h bar. All right. So um, this is the part that we're going to be looking at um, to find out basically when will this state look like this one again. All right. Um, and we, whenever you have a complex exponential, it's always, um, you always hear, you know, it's oscillating, right? So what we want to know is the period of oscillation. Basically, if this is oscillating, it will return to the same point, right? So, so for example, at t equals zero, this equals one, all right? And so real quick, we'll just show that the period of oscillation is two pi. And just using Euler's formula, um, I'm just going to use a sort of a generic form for Euler's formula, right? E equals I V. Uh, so cosine of C plus I sine of V. All right. Um, all right. Now we know that cosine and sine have a period of two pi. And so, basically, what this means is after after two pi, meaning uh, phi goes from zero to two pi, these two functions are going to return to their original values, and these are the only functions in here. So this function will also return to its original value. So we, we have a um, after a period of two pi, um, then we will. Um, return to our original state. All right, so so what we need to do is find, and this could be plus two pi or minus two pi, right? So if we look at our, I'll just write it again, e to the minus i e t over h bar, all right? We look at this and we say, oh, well this phi corresponds to e t over h bar or minus et over h bar, it doesn't matter. So we need to know when the et over h bar is equal to some multiple of 2 pi. Um, and um, and we'll, I guess we'll talk more about like the I'll just put an m here for now, right? So when m equals one, that's the minimum amount of, that will give us the minimum amount of time for this, um, for this to equal a, a multiple of, of two pi and for our wave function to return to its original state here. So now we just um, remember the energy for the uh, infinite square well. So n squared pi squared h bar squared 2m a squared. All right. Now we're just going to plug this into here and solve for t. Okay. So I'll just write it all out first. So um, and and I guess once I make this uh, this uh, 
once I force this to be equal to 2 pi, uh, that's when I'm, I guess, this little t I, I can write as a big T, because that, that's sort of a, a revival time, the big T. So little t equals big T when this is a multiple of 2 pi. So, right, I was going to write a big T here, and then an n squared pi squared, so this is just the E, right? H bar squared over 2m a squared, and then we also have this H bar right here. So, and then this is equal to uh, 2 pi, and I'm going to leave the m on for now. So we'll simplify this down real quick. Um, all right, so we have a, a four, this two, we'll multiply with this two. Uh, this, uh, this pi is going to divide out with one of those. This h bar is going to divide out with one of those. Uh, so, so far we have this, oh, I should not have used an m, should I? Let's use a, uh, L or something. Oh, that was a bad move because we have a mass. Oh, should have known that would have been confusing. All right. Okay. Um, so an L M A squared over an N squared. Then we have one pi left and we have one H bar left. Okay, so now we're going to deal with these, um, these, uh, these integers, right? We had an L integer multiple of 2 pi. All right, so for that one, um, when we talk about the revival time, we want to know, uh, even though at these periods spaced out by L, um, it will return to its original state, say we want to know the earliest time that it will return to its original state, right? Which would make more sense for, right? This is pr really what he's talking about when he says revival time. It's like, how long does it take at minimum for the particle, for the wave function to return to its original state, right? So that's kind of why I hesitated to write an integer in the first place, it's because if we want to know the minimum time, then L is just equal to one. Right, so that takes care of this one. All right, now what about the n squared? If we had a pure wave function, say, if we had a pure wave function of uh, n equals two or something, then this equation would still be just fine, right? The quantum revival time would, uh, you divide by four here, right, two squared. And that would give you the minimum amount of time you'd have to wait for a pure wave function of uh, n equals 2 to, to return to its original value. But since we want to pull out his exact words, he says, yeah, all right, he says, this is for any state, not just a stationary state, right? So any state, what we're going to end up is a mixture of stationary states. And basically, the minimum amount of time for that to return to its original uh, state uh, will just be whichever n here is smallest, right? Because then t will be the longest n, right? So some of the little pieces of your of your state, some of the stationary states, anything that's not the smallest one will return to its original state, maybe an integer number of times. But if you wait the longest period, this is where all of the times converge. And that's the, s the smallest amount of time you can say that every stationary state has made at least one full cycle back to its original value. So the long story short is that um, assuming that our, our um, general state has at least some 
probability of being in the ground state, right? There's some component of, of the ground state mixed in, then if you the, the state as a whole will not return to its original state until after the time when this is equal to one. Right, that's the longest time possible. The, the ground state takes the longest time for it to for it to come back, and when it comes back, uh, because it's an integer, all of the other higher states will also be an integer multiple of, of two pi up here, and we'll get them all to kind of reconverge, and uh, all the basically all the phases will line up again, and uh, and again the shortest time for that to happen is uh, that dictated by the lowest energy. If you want to go to the lowest energy possible, that's the ground state, n equals 1, and we'll set this equal to 1, 2, just to be sure that um, even if we have some ground state mixed in, that the, the, the entire state as a whole is returning to its original state. All right probably used a lot more words there than necessary. Okay. What is the classical revival time for a particle of energy E bouncing back and forth between the walls? Okay. So if we were to look at a classical particle in an infinite square well, right, draw a little bouncy ball, um, the time for it to be, all right, the, the state, right, the position and momentum have to be the same. So basically, uh, let's say it is here in this corner, moving with this direction, right? And uh, so it has to cross the entire square well, and it has to come all the way back and then right as it bounces and, and has the same momentum right here, that's when we uh, have our revival time. Okay, so uh, basically um, it crosses the square well two times, so once this way, once back, 2a over the revival time, um, right, gives you the velocity of the particle. So when we solve for T, so big T, it's just a two-way over V. So now we just ask ourselves, well, what is V? And classical mechanics, uh, there's no potential here. It's all zero inside the well. So we just have a one-half M V squared, the kinetic energy. All right, so V equals two E over M under square root. All right, so we plug that in here for V, and the classical revival time, uh, we have a 2A, and then just flip this upside down, M over 2E square root, okay? So there's our, our classical revival time for particle energy E bouncing back and forth between the walls. All right, for what energy? Are the two revival times equal? So what we're going to do is just um, set them equal, right? So 2a m over 2e under square root. And we'll go back and find our other expression for the, so the quantum revival time for m a squared pi h bar. Now we're going to be solving for e. It's kind of in an inconvenient spot, uh, but we can divide by 2a. So this becomes a 2, and the exponent goes away on that. And I'll go ahead and uh, square this real quick. So we have an m over 2e equals, OK, so 2 squared is 4 m squared, a squared again, pi squared, h bar squared. All right, now we'll just flip this over. Um, yeah, we'll do a 
this in steps. Get that back on for a second. So pi squared h bar squared over 4m squared a squared. All right. So now we just multiply by m over 2. This gives us e equals. All right. So this m is going to cancel with one of those m's, and then this we divide by uh, 2 on each side. So this turns into an 8. So we have pi squared h bar squared over 8m a squared. All right, so um, if we compare this to the, uh, the quantum, uh, uh, the energies for the infinite square well, um, we know that with that one, all of these parts are the same, but instead of a 1 over 8, you have an n squared over 2. Okay, so that gives us an n squared of 1 fourth, which gives us an n of 1 half. All right, and you can't have n of 1 half in the, in the quantum world. Um, Right, so this is an energy below the ground state. Um, and you can read a Griffith's footnote about that. Um, if you do a quick search on the internet, it can tell you a lot more about this. And apparently, if you, if you actually do this calculation with, um, if you kind of follow Ehrenfest's theorem, right, expectation values should follow the classical um, path, sort of. Uh, so if you do this with the expectation value of x, rather than just you know asking what time the wave functions uh, return to their original uh, state, if you ask what time the expectation value of x returns to its original state, then you get a, an answer that corresponds to the classical case. That depends on the energy. So anyway, interesting stuff.